So uh, one of my uh, one of my least favorite love languages is gifting. I suck at it. <clears throat> I'm horrible gift giver. And I know this about myself, but I've also noticed that other people are really bad gift givers, especially in the corporate world. I mean, a typical corporate gift you get in a box, let's say you uh, to speak at some event or you whatever, and then, you, know, you open up the box and there's a, a, a branded mug, right? And there's a hat with a logo on it and a pen with a logo on it. And I'm just like, okay, but what am I going to do with this thing? I got like 10 other mugs just like it and I never freaking use them. You know, and then of course there's the expected gift around the holidays. Like you get this flood of whatever gifts and you know, it's, it's almost like expected, you know? So when you get it, you're like, okay, I was expecting that anyway. And so, you know, in his book, John Rule, in, in, in his book of the cryptology, he goes through all these things. And I'm like, oh gosh, I've done that. And I've been the recipient of all that, but, but wait a minute. Well, what are you supposed to do? Like, that's what you're supposed to do. I thought this was like a normal thing. And he goes through this book about all these things that you're like, not supposed to do and that you're supposed to do. Like talk about some of those. We all do business with people that we like, trust, and are top of mind. Like that's the trifecta. Most people suck at all three of them. They do the same dinners and ball games that everybody does, or they send out, you know, hey, you're a million dollar investor. Here's a bar of chocolate with our logo on it. Like it, it's the, like really? Like that's the way you and show it. And it can, have, it can have the reverse effect too, right? Like they're, they're sending you, so a bar, a bar of chocolate you spent you spent uh you know a couple hundred grand with a client and then they send you a bar of chocolate you're like and you, but you can't say anything right like you can't you yeah. can't you can't not gonna you say bad. oh i hated that and i'm offended <laughs> you feel you feel guilty because you feel like you because you're like really somebody like think that's what the value they placed on the relationship with me like some like box of brownies or some amazon gift card go buy your own gift like here's a bottle of wine and you don't even drink here's a a bottle of wine that costs fifty dollars, and your daily drinker is one hundred and fifty dollars. Like, but most people don't understand that in relationship building, it's like going to a restaurant. I don't care if somebody took twelve hours to make the best lobster bisque in the world. If they bring it out and there's a fly in it, like it doesn't matter that you spent twelve hours making this amazing lobster bisque. All people see is the fly. And in relationship building, it doesn't matter that. Like, wow. yes, you get a, a, an internal rate of return of this and whatever else, all of that they take as table stakes. Those are like ex expectations. If you want to get more referrals, if you want to get more deals, if you want to take an investor from hundred grand to 500 grand, you have to make them feel something in an intangible way. Because people say, John, this gifts don't work. It's stupid. Why would you do that? And I'm like, have you ever had like, tell that to your wife, like, oh, the gifts don't matter. That's not true. Like when you show up for somebody powerfully and do something really thoughtful, really engaging, really personal, the other person, like that relationship tends to flourish because somebody else feels seen. Even billionaires want to be respected and feel like their life has mattered. And, and so many people think, oh, it's just about the numbers. We're, we're very, that yes, we, we have logic, but we make decisions emotionally first and then we justify logically afterwards. And yet right. most guys are so linear like check the box, do the thing at Christmas. I'm like, that's the dumbest time to send a gift on the planet. You want to send it with 50 other people competing with their time and their conference tables ready to collapse? No, show up for your wife or show up for your client or your investor on a random Tuesday in the middle of March and it'll mean a thousand times more. So a lot of the things that we teach, people are like, is it really about gifting? I'm like, no, gifting is like, that's the mechanism. It's relationship building. And when you grow up poor, you notice when people are generous, like Paul with this attorney was like always giving things away. Like he'd find a deal on noodles. He'd buy like a semi load and everybody at church the next Sunday would walk away with like 200 cases of noodles. I'm like, Paul, I'm doing the math in my head. I'm like, that was like 40 G's. You just dropped like out of nowhere. I'm like, why? I don't, I don't get it. Why? And he's like, didn't you see their smiles? So it wasn't a tactical thing, but Paul was the master relationship builder. So I remember working up the courage. I pitched Paul the idea of giving away. I thought all of his clients were men. They're CEOs of companies. You know, they're affluent people and they're into the outdoors. Maybe they'll have mercy on me and order a bunch of Cutco's pocket knives and hunting knives. They're like, you know, hundred, two hundred dollar knives, not like from China. These are real knives. And uh, he changed my life forever. He said, John, I don't want to order pocket knives. Got to order a hundred of the pairing knives. And I'm like, you want to order a hundred, hundred dollar pairing knives? Like that's weird. Why? Like, these are all dudes. Like, I'm, I'm like this country bumpkin kid. Like, it's about to show the dick as it gets. Like, why do you want to give a kitchen tool to a guy? And, uh, and he's changed my life forever. He said, John, the reason I have more referrals, the reason I can raise money, the reason I can get access, the reason I can do deals is I found out a simple truth 40 years ago. 
And that's if you take care of the family and business, everything else takes care of itself. So I started to get, I would, I would never call somebody and say, Hey, I want to sell you knives. I would say, I would send somebody a two, three, four, five hundred dollar gift with their CEO's name, the wife's name, husband's name, whatever. And I put carve out five minutes for me. I promise to be worth your time. Handwritten note, all that. And I'd get meetings with like $200 million companies. And they would be like, I'd walk into the boardroom wearing the one suit I have on. And uh, I'm nervous because I'm 21, 22 years old. And I walk in, the CEO walks in, he's like in his 60s. And he's like, are you here? To, like the John Roland that sent me the knives? I'm like, yes, sir. He said, I thought you'd be like some seasoned sales executive, like in their 50s. Like, I'm really confused. Are you here to sell me knives? I said, no, sir. I'm here to help you and your thousand sales reps do exactly what I did to you to your top 10,000 relationships. And it really, it's not even about the knives. Like the gift we did for Tony Robbins, a client wanted to take care of Tony and Sage. And I said, Pete, we got to do knives. And he's like, really? For Tony? And I said, well, check this out. We're going to take the, you know, a five, six thousand dollar knife set. Every knife, all 40 knives are going to have quotes of his wisdom that we cultivated over 40 years. So it's going to be an artifact, an instant heirloom, a daily reminder for him and his grandkids someday of what the wisdom that he and the impact that he had. And then we put it inside a $2,500 strong wood. It's called a strong box has a video screen. And Tony, you know, like he could go buy a million knife sets. Who cares? But when Sage, his wife, saw what was carved into all the blades and then saw the video of the client speaking and saying, this is what you've done in the world. This is the impact you had on me and millions of people. She came, she called like basically crying, gushing, like this is one of the most thoughtful gifts ever. It wasn't about the knives. I could take that same knife set. I could send it to Oprah. I could send it to a, a billionaire. But, every, but it's the personalization of it. It's the handwritten note, it's the video, it's the timing, it's the messaging behind it that makes it land at this deep, visceral, emotional level. So many times people get caught up like, oh, I did the knife thing, it doesn't work. And I'm like, did you follow the recipe? And they're like, what do you mean? I said, well, if you bake bread 100,000 times, but every time you don't put yeast in, guess what you don't get? You don't get freaking bread. One ingredient wrong changes everything. So, so many times people say they're, oh, we did the gifting thing. And I'm like, did you follow the recipe to a T? You don't, we don't have, you don't have to outsource it to us to do that. But most people will cut corners. They'll like, they, they won't do the handwritten note or they won't do the engraving. They won't do the personalization. They won't do the timing right. They won't include the spouse. All of those things are all part of what makes it work. It's not the item. The widget is, is like, they can go buy their own widget. It's the it's system. Budget. Most people's gifting budget is pathetic. Like it's embarrassing. Like, they're like, Hey, last year we spent three grand on brownies. And I'm like, you right. spent three yeah. grand on dinner for like six people. And that was your entire budget to show gratitude and appreciation to your most valuable mm. relationships. Like I'll spend more on my wife in a year than you're spending company wide for like 200 people, 200 relationships. Like this is like, so it, what they need to do is it like, People oftentimes like, oh, John, like you're just being extravagant or they're like, oh, gifting, like, you know, like they don't understand that they're they're. It's not a woo woo thing like this is a if, if you follow it consistently year after year and, and follow the, the math equation that we've set up, it's a reinvestment strategy, really five to 15 percent of your net profits should be reinvested back into your relationships, your centers of influence, your clients, your employees. You know, 15 is on the high end, five is really low, 10 is kind of about average. Um, and people are like 10% of net, like, but I made a million dollars last year. And I'm like, how did you make a million dollars? You made it because of these relationships. So you're going to take a sliver, 10% of the million, that's 100 grand. You get to keep 900 grand. They're buying their own gifts. The people who gave you a million dollars are buying their own gifts. But if you do it well, here's the cool thing. You reinvest that hundred grand back into them. They should be over time sending you more referrals, more deals, more people like them, more opportunities, more engagement, more loyalty. So that hundred grand goes into them. And over time, like Cameron, this, this is the principle, 25 grand invested equals a 50 X ROI. Where else can you get that? Your best client should become your, your salespeople. Like Cameron, you know, who coaches CEOs, I couldn't hire him if I gave him $2 million a year. He wouldn't become a full-time sales rep. He actually sells better than a $2 million sales rep by going out and just opening doors because he's inspired to, not because he has to. I don't give him a cut. He's doing it because he wants to see me win because of the relationship. We like do anything to get, uh, you know, to wine and dine and, 
and get some, you know, marry somebody. And then as soon as they're like, we're married, we stop dating them. We stop wooing them. That's a recipe for disaster. You know, like totally. in, in, in business, it's the same way. It's like, you'll do anything to get the client. And then as soon as they're in the door, it's like, oh, I'll take you for granted. That's when you double down and show up more, not less. And so, yes, you might invest in somebody for 27 years, but that person that you're investing for 27 years probably was an investor or a client or employee, somebody that was already giving you money and you're going to show up for them for 27 years. But there are times where you might just show up for somebody and do something nice. Like I meet people on airplanes, I'll send them a $500 gift and they're like, it, it, you know, it might be a billionaire or somebody crazy. And I'm not asking for anything, but they gave me like 30 minutes of their time. And I, and I can't right. tell you how many like conversations and, and doors that open up where that person then moves to another company. And now they're like, John, we need a speaker. John, we, you know, I'm in a position. Or, this. Um, or even in that 30 minute time, you learned one thing that now puts you on a different trajectory in the way you think about the world. Even, yeah. even on that level, that was worth it. Right. And that happens all the time when you get in contact with those people right and so yeah it, well what's what's an hour of their time worth some of these people is thousands or tens of thousands of dollars or even hundreds right of so you send them a 500 dollars gift and their time's worth ten thousand dollars an hour they spent 30 minutes with you they they i mean they should send you an invoice for five grand but you <laughs> it, but but most people like don't value people like the most valuable asset for an affluent person especially is their time that's an asset that the, they can always make more money. They can always like, but you can't make more time. So if you take even five minutes of somebody's time and don't honor them for that time, not signing the deal, not investing. If an investor gives you 30 minutes of time, like that is like an investment. They gave you, they actually, like if you saw like that show up in cash, you'd be like, wow, I just cost them a lot of money. I better, I better bring value. I better like bring something to the table. So, so it's too many times people don't understand the transactional value of time. And to me, like, that's a great, like, because the bar is so low, when I would meet with somebody, early mentors that guys that were running hundred million dollar companies, and I would send them a, a you know, a $300 knife set, a couple knives engraved with their name saying, thanks for carving out time, really value, really appreciate it. Everybody says they appreciate your time. But to me, like gratitude and is a action. It's a doing, it's putting your money where your mouth is. So many people are like, oh, I'm so appreciative of your time. Great. Show me. Like, do something that shows me that you're different than everybody else that's appreciating me for my time.